Uh, you know, right off the bat, at least a few things, if you've been following us for a while, you might be familiar with some of our projects, things like one of the world's most recognized 3D printed homes. We, uh, we've we really been involved with NASA, one reason why we're here in the Space Coast. We've won multiple first place awards at the uh, NASA Mars Habitat Challenges. Um, Anna touched on the Guinness World Record that we'd set back in 2019. But, um, you know, things like having the first commercially permitted 3D printing uh, building in America, you know, those are things that really show that we're able to get traction and get permitted and get deployed pretty easily. Um, of course, we have uh, some patents you can learn more about on our website as well or check it out on USPTO. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit. But just to make sure we all uh, we have people in this in this meeting that have different levels of knowledge about construction, how it's done now and how we do it. So just to kind of make sure we're on equal footing here, uh, looking at traditional construction, something I've definitely experienced out in the field a lot with human error. Um, human error is one of those things that is pretty inevitable and it's pretty expensive. When you build something and have to demolish it, you've wasted your time, you've wasted your labor, and uh, if you don't demolish it and you continue working around, let's say, some walls that aren't perfectly straight or perfectly plumb, it really affects every one of those other contractors down the line. Your flooring guy is going to have to make adjustments when you're doing baseboards and crown molding and putting in kitchen cabinets and drywall and everything else. Every other contractor is making adjustments. And that requires an extra level of skill. It, it requires more money. Uh, so using a robot to build that primary structure right off the bat, it really ensures that you are starting with a high quality product that is built with robotic precision. When it comes to what's actually built, you know, once the robot leaves the site, most homes in the U.S. are built out of wood. This is a uh, you know, flammable, absor absorbent termite food, essentially. Um, you know, it's something that's not really built to last a lifetime. Um, we here in Florida are really big fans of concrete because of the extreme weather events that we experience and uh, because of some of the savings in terms of maintenance and HVAC. So building out of something, we, we build out of what's essentially a like a high strength mortar or concrete. Um, it's about 33% stronger than concrete block homes that are already out there on the market. So something that is uh, really great for those home buyers. As a builder, delays are one of those things that everybody's facing, especially in a post-COVID world. Right now, median delays out in construction site are up to and around 200 days. So not only are you able to build faster with a printer, but even more importantly, you're able to to know before you ever step foot on the construction side, a site, how long it's going to take to build that home down to the second. We know exactly what these printers are going to be doing while they're out there. So this makes it really easy to schedule those subcontractors and, and keep construction moving and ultimately just reduce risk to your timeline and your budget. Uh, now, uh, there's definitely a lot of environmental concerns around the construction industry. Part of that's because construction and demolition waste is by far the largest contributor to landfills. So using a technology that's not reductive, you aren't cutting two by fours and sheets of plywood, um, you're, you're adding only the material that you need. So it's zero waste. Uh, it's all electric and, and the material that we're using, including the steel reinforcement, that's fully recyclable material. So um, definitely something that can help uh, you know, create a greener, uh, a greener home. And one of my favorite things here on the design side is this architectural freedom. You, know, you see a lot of homes out there with straight lines and hard corners. And that's not because there's a lot of straight lines and hard corners in nature or because we just like straight lines and hard corners more. It's mainly because that's how the materials come. You're, you're straight, you know, it's two by fours, your straight pieces of lumber, your square blocks. Um, we can print a, a curved wall that's typically only seen in luxury construction. We can print that at a really affordable uh, price, you know, just as affordable or even more affordable than us printing a hard corner, which we can do. We can cut the corner and, and print something that's really uh, not only aesthetically appealing, but also something that functionally can work better with the uh, with the uh, designs and environment that you choose. 
So this is going to be recorded and that recording is going to be available to you. So don't worry about all the information that you see on screen right now. Um, these are just some of the uh, specifications of the printer, Frank. Um, and here's a little bit more on Gary. Uh, Gary is this mixing machine that we use. And most of the industry out there, they're using plastering machines. These are uh, been around in construction for a while. It's something that uh, it, they are a massive headache to use. Um, really creating our own mixing machine was a, a real way to avoid having to use these. They're expensive. They are extremely difficult to clean. They need to be cleaned very often. Um, we often have to use things like sludge hammers to be able to, you know, break off cavity pumps and actually get them open and clean them. So uh, moving over to a technology that now the Gary 2.0, it's kind of the second generation, uh, is really helped us because uh, the mixer is the brains of the operation. You know, the printer gets all the glory, but at the end of the day, the printer is only as good as the material that's going to it. So Having Gary, uh, you know, constantly monitoring the water temperature, the environmental conditions, the the print speed, um, and in fact, Gary is the the brains of the operation, really telling the printer what to do and can anticipate what's going to happen before it even gets there. So, uh, these are some of the reasons why that quality of wall is so high. So here's Frank in action. You can see him on his continuous tracks driving around and. Uh, here we're seeing things like cutting some very tight corners here. The spatula helps us to do that. Um, I know that some people are a fan of the curved walls. Some people just want something that looks exactly like everything they've seen before. Uh, you can do really both with the printer. Um, and yeah, of course, the, the consistency of the walls is something that really stands out in the industry there. Let's see what we have here. So um, yes, Anna touched on gantry printers uh, brief, briefly earlier. Uh, you know, 3D printing it, right now and for the foreseeable future, it, it's a really hot, uh, a really hot technology in the construction industry. And there are other companies that are in the space, but the vast majority of uh, majority of them, like some of the ones earlier mentioned in the question, this, uh, these are mostly gantry printers. Uh, again, massive machines, very expensive to transport compared to uh, a more mobile technology. That setup time for gantry printers, not only is it kind of dangerous, you're using cranes, you're, um, you know, kind of climbing up on, uh, you know, large truss systems to try to bolt everything together. Um, but you're also working with a pretty large crew in that process, not only while you're building the printer, but while you're operating the printer. Oftentimes, you'll see a lot of larger crews out there helping to support those systems. Part of the reason isn't really have much to do with the printer as much as it does the mixing machine and the ability for these systems to really work in harmony to deliver that, that building at the end of the day. And of course, scale here, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, whether you're looking to print an affordable home or an affordable complex or even something on the more luxury side, being able to scale and, and uh, take advantage of some of those unit economics, it's something that we're able to do uh, virtually on an infinite basis. You know, the, the main restriction to the size of the building you can print with our printer is the really the land that you're printing on. Um, when it comes to the gantry printers, you're really needing to build inside of that box. So the bigger the home, the bigger the printer. So, uh, so those are really the main high level things. If you'd like to learn more on that, Opus Core University, we really get into um, some of the costs and how to judge them between, uh, you know, when assessing a printer. So printing in multiple sections, this is how we're able to build these massive buildings. And one thing you'll notice is this... Uh, control joint that's formed between the two print sections. Typically, when you're doing uh, traditional concrete construction, you have to get a big cement saw out to cut in these building, uh, these building joints, their uh, movement joints, things like, uh, you know, seismic joints, um, expansion joints, these are required by building code. So instead of, you know, bringing a big cement saw and holding this above your head, we're able to really automate that process. And there's a lot of other things we can do during the actual print by printing in sections. So after the printer's left section one and moved on to section two, 
we're already installing outlets, getting reinforcement installed, windows, uh, you know, plumbing, rough-in installations for a, a number of systems um, you know, while the printer is still operating. This is something that isn't typically done with masonry construction, but these concurrent activities can really help speed up that construction process. And, and lastly, you know, operating multiple printers at the same time. This is something that we're already able to do. And if you look in the top left, you can kind of see what that looks like. Since the, uh, the, the G code, the printer's language, is kind of broken up into those sections, we can already deploy multiple printers either on different projects or on the same project at the same time. This just really lends to the scalability there. You know, if you're a construction company, you wanted to purchase one printer up front, you could very easily scale your operations and continue to grow. So uh, one of the big questions we get is around permitting. And really our whole approach to the walls that we print has been, you know, why reinvent the wall when you can just copy this gold standard of concrete masonry unit or concrete block construction? And we really take that to heart. So when you look at kind of over here on the left, we have two walls. On the left, it's a standard concrete block wall. And on the right, it's a 3D printed wall. You'll notice that there's a lot of things very identical about these. Things like using the exact same rebar reinforcement and at the exact same spacing, or using ladder wire and doing that at the exact same interval, or things like a bond beam up at the top of the wall. Of course, we're doing all the exact same things because we didn't want to create a whole new set of building code that we need to wait for people to adopt and wait for tradespeople to learn. Instead, we're really just copying what's already out there so we can penetrate the market much more quickly. Um, on the right side of the screen here, you'll notice uh, kind of a detail that you'd see, uh, a sectional that you'd see in a set of construction documents. If you ever seen a sectional for concrete block construction, then you'll immediately know that this looks identical. The only difference is essentially, uh, you'll see kind of a squiggly line over here on the right and a little arrow that says uh, the extruded concrete wall. Uh, this is great because if you have a set of construction documents for a, a track home or, or a concrete block home, you're able to really quickly convert those into documents for a 3D printed home. So the the whole process isn't disrupted here and the architects the engineers the building officials um the the builders the tradespeople, everybody's really doing the same thing they were doing before just more efficiently and faster um this is really one of the big reasons why we were able to create the first commercially permitted 3d printed building in america uh, so you know how do you design these things uh, most architects use softwares like AutoCAD and Revit, so we've created plugins for those softwares where you're able to very quickly uh, generate that tool path and create G-code. For those who aren't familiar, the, the printer, Frank, he doesn't speak English. He, he speaks G-code. That's the kind of the printer's native language. It's those instructions. And we do have uh, you know some videos even available on YouTube to show you how quick and easy this is. And we're also developing some online courses to help make it even easier. Once we create that G-code, we always test it out in a simulator real quick. That way, there's no surprises when you get out to the construction site. When it comes to the questions that we receive, we have more questions on secondary construction than anything else. Now, how are you doing reinforcement or insulation or all of these other things, windows, doors, mechanical, electrical, plumbing? Thankfully, the answer is the same to every one of these questions, and that's that we copy concrete block construction. So you'll reinforce these walls in the exact same way. Uh, slab connection details, insulation, all of these things are done identically. Um, in fact, you can kind of see in the bottom right here that if you take a concrete block and you set it right on top of one of our 3D printed walls, all of the, you know, the infill, that, those kind of webbings, everything connects up perfectly. Every, everything looks very similar. Um, this helps to really, uh, you know, simplify the process and uh, integrate this into your existing workflow as a construction company much more easily. It also helps from uh, you know, a perspective of someone who isn't in construction, uh, maybe a home builder, get delivered a little bit more quickly. And obviously, uh, uh, you really see a very simple process. It's easy to maintain after the fact. Here's a little uh, nod to Opuscore University. Again, feel free to check it out on our website. So I'll kind of close up here with an update on our model house that Anna had touched on earlier. 
So it's going to be a really exciting project. First off, it's going to be the first 3D printed home in Florida's Space Coast, a place that is, you know, constantly innovating. And we're, we're happy to be able to be the first here in this area. Now, uh, don't quote me on this, but now that I think about it, I think it might be one of the first 3D printed homes, if not the first 3D printed home in a high velocity wind zone. So we are going to be building this right through hurricane season. So we're going to be demonstrating some of those capabilities uh, when working in an environment that is pretty harsh. Uh, I know there's been a lot of interest from uh, people involved with disaster relief and off-grid construction, and uh, a technology like this really could be deployed in an area like that. Not only do we have battery power on the bulk truck, but um, being able to operate it with very limited resources is something that's really important to uh, things like off-grid construction and disaster relief. So we'll be demonstrating how some of that can be done on this project, even if you don't really have access to power or water on the construction site. Um, yeah, when it comes to permitting, um, thankfully, you know, building officials were uh, uh, very, uh, you know, open and actually excited about this project. Uh, it's something that is uh, familiar to them and that they understand all the documents, but kind of different, new and exciting in, in, in the way that it is 3D printed. Um, we really didn't have any comments on the uh, the structural aspects of the home, but when it comes to the uh, the septic that Anna mentioned earlier, yeah, after we'd submitted our septic permit, Florida released the House Bill 1379, which uh, essentially banned septic systems in uh, a very good chunk, over 50% of the state, a uh, very large chunk of our land area, including where this home is. So we had to uh, kind of adapt and uh, created a, a new ATU, an aerobic treatment unit system, and kind of resubmit that. So We've been just uh, kind of waiting for them to get that back to us, but we look like uh, it looks like we're going to start printing here just after we're finished up with the product presentations that are going on throughout this month. So kind of stay tuned and you can see what some of that's going to be like. I have kind of a short video here showing that we'll be using a very conventional monolithic slab system. We'll be uh, getting the printer out there on that slab and we'll be doing this in uh, five different positions, but you can kind of see what that looks like here. Um, We'll uh, we'll have those. The fifth position really is helping us with uh, a cool feature wall we'll be doing on the inside of the home. But electrical is going to be added. We'll have some window bucks that are required by code here. We'll have insulation in those cavities, uh, reinforcement. We'll have the uh, grout in those wall cavities. If you hide the print material, this is kind of what's inside of the walls. But we'll do the code required top plate, a uh, very limited framing out there, and of course our roof system. We'll get our, our trusses formed up, our subfascia, our uh, our deck. All this stuff is very standard with construction. And then, uh, of course, we'll be kind of trimming and finishing the home out on the inside there. So we'll, uh, we'll be keeping everybody updated as to the process that we've been going through there. Uh, keep an eye on our social medias and on our... Uh, on our website and we'll definitely be excited to share some of this with you guys uh, coming here shortly so that's it for my presentation here i'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen and uh, i believe there's probably some questions that are going to be coming in that we can start answering for you